All right. Okay, the um, the project I'm going to talk about today is the Bendigo Law Court. So we, um, and two of the people that are attending this meeting were very involved in the project. So um, Alan and Sonny, you can jump in and, and add uh, comments to this. Um, so I'm going to start uh, just going through what, what the client asked us to do and um, a little bit of high level. And then I'm going to go through the, the website and show you some, some bits of it. Okay, so um, the project is for the Bendigo Law Courts, and we call it the Digital Wayfinding Project. So the requirement, the Court Services Victoria um, came to us uh, looking for us to build a website. Um, this website uh, was for the new Bendigo Law Courts. So the Bendigo Law Courts um, were placed in a very old building, and um, maybe I mean, a couple of years ago, they started building a new state-of-the-art um, uh, location for, for the courts. Uh, and for that, they wanted to have like a complementary a website that would help users to, um, to find a way through the courts, uh, but also to help them um, to get prepared uh, for the court experience. Or, as you so there there is a, a quite a bit of synergy between the 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 context of the building and how it was designed and the purpose of it and also the website uh, and then the purpose of the website. Um, we in salsa we um, salsa proposed to use the civic theme design system which has been developed by salsa and the. The advantage of using this is that it would provide uh, Court Services Victoria with a mature visual theme uh, and would allow for a high quality, high quality site to be delivered at lower and uh, with low effort and lower cost. Okay, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, the Bendigo Courts. Uh, this is the building. So uh, the building has uh, been designed for the very user-centric approach. So everything is in the in the design of the building is to make people, users and staff of the courts to feel safe, and and to make that experience of going to court um, a little bit more comfortable. Um, so there's a lot of of of, of things in the design that uh, to help the user. Um, they so they 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 prioritize the physical and well-being and psychological well-being of court users, um, of staff, uh, and also there's a, a strong focus on technology and environmental sustainability. So, for example, in um, the in the uh, in the building has separate entrances for you know in cases of uh, the family violence court they have in separate entrances for. Uh, people that might be involved in that, so they don't have to come face to face with with the person they are going against. Uh, so there's a lot of, of thought about the, the experience of the user going into the court, um, and there's also a lot of uh, emphasis on the um, and a lot, there's been a lot of collaboration. Oh, excuse me. Um, so there was a lot of collaboration with the traditional owners uh, in the design of the building. Uh, where the digital wayfinder comes in, uh, so it, the, the site, the website also contains a lot of information to support the user. So before they go into the into the into the court um, and how to find their way through the 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 building around the building and how they can connect also with other support services. No. Okay. So um, from a, a project perspective, um, Salsa organized, so we looked at all the requirements for the, for the website and we sort of mapped those requirements against the civic theme components and sort of categorize the requirements, um, the components or classify them as in three categories. So some some of the components will be straight um, 
civic theme components without any alteration. Some of them would be um, would have to be adapted to um, to be used, and then there were some custom components as well. That I'm gonna I'm gonna go through those too. Um, I'm just gonna mention this here, but I want to go into the website and then I can um sort of show you how how all those things uh, fit in. Uh, in terms of the custom features, we um, had interactive maps. Um, we have a, a page for legal and support services, and uh, one of the main um, the main components that we developed was a court schedule page. Um, unfortunately, well, at the moment that is not active. Uh, that's not enabled on the site, but I can show you some of the designs and, and talk through that. And then we've also worked on the an set up, setting up an API from Drupal into the Kio system. So the and I'm going to talk about that as well. If I go into the side, so this is the. This is the site that is um, we went live last Friday. Um, and this is the building. And as you can see, it has a lot of information for users about how to get, how to plan their visit and how to um, talk. To, they talk about the process, uh, how everything works, what to bring, what to do, uh, what to wear. Like they, they provide a lot of information for the users so they are prepared for that experience. Um, one of the things that um, we worked on and that um, at the moment is not enabled is the courts and tribunal schedules. So at the moment, you can see here there are links to different um, to different um, websites, external websites. Uh, the building it actually hosts different jurisdictions. So these are these are all the different jurisdictions that um, operate with from that building, and each of them has a schedule of hearings of court cases that happen on that day. So at the moment, these are links to the schedule for each of the these different jurisdictions. What we developed was actually a consolidated view of all the cases happening at the courts on a particular day. So I'm going to show the design so you see what. What that looked like. And, you know, maybe. In the future, it will be enabled on the site. So how this works is you have the uh, like all the cases. All happening on the particular date at the court are taking place on that, at, the, at the court on a particular day. And then going through the different tabs, you could filter the cases by jurisdiction. But also search by name, by case name or ID, and it will uh, bring up the case. This um, this information was fed or is fed through to the site from an API. So the, it's updated every day with the cases for that day. Uh, Ines, I had a question, if yes. I can. Um, yes. And I saw this on one of your the second slides you had. Like when we speak about the magistrates court, county court, supreme court, etc., VCAT, is is it actually uh, because I, I uh, is it ev everything gets executed of those courts out of Bendigo? And I ask that because yeah. we've got these courts in, well, we've had these courts at least in in uh, CBD of Melbourne. Have, have they like? Yeah transferred everything over to Bendigo or is it just the Bendigo part of those courts? I think I think it's the Bendigo part of those courts right. that operate from there. Okay. Um, Makes sense. As, the last time we, we had the that I, that I checked on the on the site and they had the API was live. Uh, on those particular dates they didn't have cases for, for some of the for the, some jurisdictions. So it doesn't seem like this every day they are, they have hearings from every jurisdiction. So the most common ones are the VCAT and I think the magistrate's court. I see. Yeah. And, I, and I know you said um, you would mention this at some 
some, some part of the presentation. But when we start speaking about kiosk, is is it like a, a booth within the court itself? Yes, or, yes. Or the building, I so, should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kiosk, um, throughout the building, they have this um, kiosk uh, digital uh, screens where you can, uh, you basically say you are sitting on the ground floor. Or, um, so you can say, okay, I need to go to, my hearing is in level two, you know, here. Um, how do I get there? So from the kiosk, you can say, how do I get to this, to this, from where I am? How do I get to, you know, level two, room 2.1? And the kiosk will uh, provide a map of how you get from that particular location to, to that room. Um, and to do that, we actually, we host like, I think it's about seven or 800, Sunny food might, might know the, the exact figure, but it's like between seven and 800 images of maps um, that feed into the kiosk, um, into the kiosk system. Uh, to provide that, you know, those direct their directional maps and they are hosted, they're they're saved in uh, in the directory in in our system. And they, can they, I, they, can sorry, I jump in? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say because I, I was involved in the early part of the BA stuff for this year. It was quite interesting. They've got um each kiosk is contextual, so where it is in the building, and so it had to be mapped to exactly where that spot was. And yeah. so that spot obviously is saying it's go left or go right. So it had to be in context of those kiosks. And there are many kiosks around the building so that obviously wherever you go to, you can find the correct location of the correct court and also the timing, um, the scheduling itself based on the API. So the, yeah. the website manages the kiosk, even though you don't see it necessarily, the kiosk information. Um, yeah. But yeah, contextually on the site as well, it's quite cool that it's managed through the website. Yeah, and um, now we were talking about the kiosk. So we have... <laughs> Uh, not only those directional maps that uh, we we host, but also we have we have we manage the content of the kiosk from Drupal, and that goes back to the kiosk on through an API as well. So if you see here, we have kiosk pages. So all this the, all the content of these pages are not visible um, on Drupal, but we can edit the content of those pages. Um, from from Drupal, and that that's um, updated on the kiosk on on the kiosk end uh, via an API. This one. Okay. Sorry. Um, any other questions on the kiosk? No. Okay. So just going back to this page, as I said at the moment, um, that consolidated uh, list of hearings is not is not um, is not available, uh, and this was a last minute decision um, by the client. But you know they're hoping that they they will be able to to activate that again. Um, but that's where it is now. And then if you um, click on some of the on a particular case or hearing, you will get, you know, the details of that particular hearing on a different page, on a new page. Yeah, yeah another thing to that one, I guess, is, yeah, what's interesting, you can click onto that card, the court um, schedule card, and you can click on the location. So if you know what you're looking uh, for, yes. you found the type of court case it is, you can click on the location and it'll actually show you where it is. So before you get to the court, you can actually plan your day, which is again making it easier for the day itself. Yeah, there the, the, the has been a lot of thought about how to make the whole experience really um, user friendly. So it's this quite interesting. Okay, the other thing that um, we did was all the build this uh, tab filters and these are all the uh, maps for the different uh, so they have two different types of of, uh, of maps so they have uh, filter by the type of service so you have building facilities for example courtrooms 
And then you have the, for here the core rooms in every floor, in every, on every level of the building. And then you can filter by meeting rooms. And then, you know, again, it shows you where all the meetings room are. And then there's also, you can go through the building via floor plan. So if you just want to see what, you know, you're going to go to level two and you want to see what facilities are around there, you just click, go through this. How does that present on mobile? Um, you know, it's like is it some sort of stack menu and the image yeah, squashes or how Let me see if I can. Can you see? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Because I imagine, oh, well, yeah. you know, you'd be on maybe on a mobile when you're if you're in the building itself, but yeah, yeah. I think the idea was that pinch. You just use a native pinch zoom, is that right? Maybe Alan, where is he somewhere that can elaborate or Sunny or even yes, you know? No, I don't know on that one. Yeah. Just just back to the question on the kiosk. I explained, you know, how it's sort of contextual to its location, but does does the kiosk have um for example most of the content from the site, like like this mapping or just like no. it's only there to sort no, of No, it's only there you? to help to help you move around and, and know right. what to do and you know when you are there in the uh, in the building. Mm, okay. Yeah, um, it doesn't have I can give you some more context on the kiosk. So they, I think they have like two kiosks at the court and every kiosk has a path to every room on every floor and the mm -hmm. combinations of each kiosk to each room, it results in like about seven to eight hundred photos that we store on the website. And whenever the, the kiosk can generate the, the map and an image and display on the kiosk itself. But if the visitor, they want to capture the, the pass and store on their mobile phone, they can scan a QR code and that QR code that link to the image that's stored on the website. So those images are actually re-generated by the kiosk system yeah. and uploaded to Rupert website. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Sunny. Okay. Um, that's that. uh, the other thing that uh, they uh, was quite a bit of is this uh, tab filters here. So these are all the services that offer um, that are available to court users. Um, so they they categorize them in you know in the building of services that are available within the Bendigo courts and also services that are outside the building. So you can filter um, the filter by those services. Click. This and you can again you can find um, the locations of the services within the building. It takes you to the maps. What was cool about this one and the cards one is that this is civic theme, but this is all extensions to a civic theme. So this was uh, not out of the box or unique to this, and it was quite e well. I don't know, easy <laughs> visually. <laughs> we could put it in there. I guess it's up to the team to make to, to to comment how easy it was to put in there. But it looks really good like from the um from the end. In the end, uh, use. yeah, it looks, it looks really yeah. good. That's so good. I like the tab filters. Yeah, maybe you've already done this. You know, but uh, uh, and Suchi could probably say, but but you know, we're building the service finder um, for the mental health website, and you know, this is a sort of part, mm. part, partly what we do, and and that's uh, oh, actually, sorry, no, that's using STP Ripple. Um, yeah, yeah, that's... yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'm getting mixed up. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. Um. Well, let me see what else. Um, in terms of the website, what else there was? Um, as I said, there's a lot, you know, it's a lot of information for users. 
and, you know, like as I said, even what to wear to court and what to, to bring, what not to bring, what not to say, what not to do. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of information, but I think they were going, um, as I say, it was a very user-centric design to the building and that's a, that, that approach is reflected on the information on the website. So they're very complementary in terms maybe, of... Maybe we don't know this yet, you know, but, uh, you know, obviously I had some feedback from the project team on the client side saying, you know, we're, you know, we're really liking the site, but uh, it'll be very interesting to get some feedback from, you know, the public that's using this, like at some point in time, like just, yeah. maybe, you know, we've heard, but, you know, it's a, it's a value-add service, obviously, and hopefully it's assisting them, yeah. Yeah, well, that that would be very useful to know if someone actually who has experience going to the you know for, to the old building and 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 going through that experience and now coming to this building with all these uh, websites supporting um, supporting them, you know how how they feel about it and what the feedback is it would be really helpful. I agree. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else. Um, I don't think uh, obviously uh, throughout the you know that the, there was also an emphasis on accessibility so there was a little bit of work to to make sure that everything was accessible um, um, for everyone um, we put a little search function there but I'm not sure don't have a lot more to say, but please ask me questions. There is, um, I think there is a plan. Uh, actually, there is. They are working on, um, on the building directory. They are um, working on putting. Uh, an option for uh, traditional languages, um, not to translate the, the whole thing, but just to put some explanation with a recording um, in in traditional language of what the, each of the um, each of the steps is. So that's something just to make it um, you know more accessible to to other users too. With the court schedule, in us, like I know yeah. you, um, you mentioned, I don't know, there was some you know last minute um, thought that hey, not going to launch with the court schedule. But do you have any idea? And and we've built it all right. <laughs> so oh. do, you have, do you have any idea what it will take to um, like resurface that, or what needs to change to, to change? Because I mean, it seems like a pretty valuable feature on the side. Well, just, to just me, it, to me, it was the most valuable. Feature and one of the main um, the main components of the whole project, um, and and it was like that from the beginning, you know that that was the main feature um, that that we had to work on. Um, in terms of and and I think the decision came from um, to to make the website live. We had to go through a number of um, approvals within for services Victoria, and I think there was someone who thought uh, maybe it was going to be confusing for users. So the decision, you know, was, okay, we'll, we'll leave. But I think uh, in terms of restoring on the website, it should be okay because, it, you know, it's all there. Yeah. We've done but, all the work. But how, how much more confusing would it be than what, whatever sits behind these buttons, like find the VCAT hearings or the... Well, if you look at, well, to me... For me, if you're going into a building where you have all these hearings happening, I'd rather look there rather than go into a, you know, you have to, this, if you click on VCAD, uh, it takes you to a generic, I mean, the you know, the VCAD case is everywhere in Victoria. Um, so you have to look for, you know, you can, you can search by name, case number or address, but it's... Um, and you can hear, but I'm I'm not sure the you know to me to me it's more more logical to have everything in on in here, given that you're in the building and you're only seeing 
hearings that are happening there on that day. Yeah, maybe, you know, we just keep uh, in touch with our project contact to see what we can do to help, you know, shepherd If there's anything through. that we can yeah, help exactly. to, yeah. because also I, I feel, you know, it's obviously always that they invested a lot of time as well, thinking through um, the requirements and, and yeah, and to make it happen. Maybe Sunny or Alan, like from the back end or front end perspective, is there any sort of, you know, funky things that you had to come across, you know, or Drupal gold nuggets or, or anything to comment on the site? And they might not be, just, just interested in anything while you're putting this together. Look, um, oh, Sunny. Yeah, thanks, Anna. It's not really a problem in the back games because it actually is um, JavaScript applications that run solely on front end. Yeah, I think that's the part for Alan. Yeah, the um, well, frustrating thing is that the best front end feature is the one that we can't show, and um, that's that's pretty much the only thing I've worked on on this project. So, yeah. Sorry, Alan. Um, I do think that we used some Drupal modules in order to get it's. Uh, we use Vue.js um, for rendering that list. Uh, I think we used some Drupal modules. Uh, to actually get that page rendering. So that was something a bit different to what I've, what we've normally done. Did you have a question, Carlos? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, maybe I, I missed it. it. Is this part hosted in Google CMS? No. If yet. So... Yeah. Uh, no? OK. So uh, and I was also another question differently. I was. You said first this first was doing by a civic theme. I was looking uh, now in this theme looks like a, a boilerplate with some store book and another other on other functions and uh, some content types and paragraphs. Uh, my question is, uh, were were you able to use most of the the paragraphs? Um, content types that comes from this module, or uh, do, did you need to create a new content types, new paragraphs? Um, my question is, what is the overall? Uh, was this uh, this theme uh, really uh, really helped the helped the development, or uh, you 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 need to construct much more things than re re reusing things for, from the theme? Um, I could answer that question. Yep. So what you see on the side actually is all the out of our features from Civic Team, except the the tabs. So the tab is the custom component that we need to create, but the content within the tab is still the component from Civic Team. Oh, awesome! Thank you. By the way, just Carlos, just on the hosting, just just FYI, it's it is not GovCMS as we spoke about, but we've hosted this on Salsa's own hosting platform, which is actually based on the same technology as GovCMS and SDP, but it's not GovCMS hosted. Mm -hmm. No, my my question was, uh, for example, if you uh, say a yes, I would ask if it's a PES or SES, because the the way of development changes from one type to another. When is uh, SAS, uh, for example, we cannot we cannot use custom modules, so uh, that can bring a, a little more uh, a, a different approach for development. Yes, but this secret team is, is not really a custom module; it's a team, and it can run perfectly on GovCM and SAS. Because at the moment there are several customers, our customer that's adopt Civic Team on GovCM as SaaS already. Yeah, so, so, so Civic Team out of the box runs on SaaS and then it depends on if you're on SaaS or not, how much you can do to it. Because this was not SaaS, we didn't have those limitations. It gave us a bit more freedom to achieve what the, the team have achieved. That's how we did it. So, I, in other words, uh, are you saying most of the development you didn't uh, need to construct any custom module. 
it's not a module, it's a team. Oh. It's a team with some um some re install config. So the config come with a team can be installed on SaaS. No, I, I mean uh, apart from the the civic theme, uh, for example, if you need to construct any custom module for a, for any functionality, uh, that will would not be possible with the uh, with a SaaS. But uh, as soon as you 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 said most of development was uh, constructed out of the bo box with the civic theme. I think uh, you you don't need needed to you didn't need to construct any custom module. Yeah, I think that's that a question that's not specific for civic team, because as long as you are on GUPS in a SaaS, you are not allowed to create any custom module at all. So if you use civic team, which means you have to stick to whatever vanilla feature that provided by civic team, or you can do anything customization using like side building, but you cannot write any custom code. So it will be the same for any other either custom or contribute teams out there in the uh, in Ruby community. Okay, thank you for, for the, the answers. Carlos, if you need more information about Civic Team or if you have more questions around it, you can always um, ping us and then we can probably clarify some of some more of your questions. No, no, no worries. I, I, I was questioned just for because I I I I felt really interesting in this in this film. Um that that was great though. Uh you basically you constructed a old site. Just with the 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 theme, the, that's great. Yep. Yep. All right, back to you, Ines. Um, I don't have um anything unless you want me to go through any particular areas. I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Ines or for the dev team? We have. Uh, we have Alan, we have Sunny, and we also have Natanya who worked on the content for this project. So you can ask questions. Actually, just on that note, which is interesting that you mentioned Nathania. So Nathania was the um, content assembler, uh, site assembler. So in the idea of specific theme with very little, if you're using out of the box, you don't have to do a lot of development, um, Carlos, to your point about modules and things. The idea is that we have an assembler, all the features that are available in civic theme and someone just kind of uses the components that are within the content types to just build out the pages so Nathania is actually the site assembler she, she goes in she gets mm -hmm. the layouts and just kind of orders all the different features and components in the way that we need it to look so um, that's a pretty cool step that we have all right thanks a lot for this Ines I'll stop recording now. <laughs>